everybody and you're very welcome to the latest Cup of Culture from the South Tip Arts Podcast here at the Arts Centre in Clonmel. Now the Clonmel Junction Arts Festival, which takes place from the 4th to the 12th, so it's on right now all over Clonmel and almost 20 years old, the Clonmel Junction Arts Festival is one of the key arts events of summer in the South East. While many events have been cancelled across the country, Festival director Kleen Amara insisted that the festival was always going to go ahead and has reimagined the theme of 2020 vision into 2020 visionaries. All the events this year will take place in a virtual context, as well as a series of visual arts events in the town itself. You might remember that we spoke to Kleena a few weeks ago about what we could expect from the festival this year. And if you want further details, the best place to go is junctionfestival.com, where you can download a digital brochure. But you can also find them in the various shops and public buildings throughout the town. Right in the run up to the opening of the festival, I had the opportunity to visit the O'Connell Street Studios, formerly a music shop, which has been adapted into an audio visual studio. All, of course, observing the strict social distancing guidelines. At the studios, I had the opportunity to talk to some of the backroom team who shared some of their highlights of the festival with me. Without them, the festival really wouldn't be possible. So it's really lovely to have an insight into their busy lives at the moment. And I'm very grateful to them for taking the time out. Elizabeth, as well as being the graphic designer, you are kind of a jack of all trades. Really. Like you do everything. I mean, generally, we would find you maybe on the box office or you could be doing anything, but always utterly indispensable <laughs> body at, at events. I know there's, there's a million events and we could be here all day talking about them all. In terms of your kind of things that you're looking forward to the most or your highlights? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to There Will Be Time. So this is a series of street banners that are going to be on O'Connell Street and Parnell Street. There's 26 in total and they're quotes from poets in Clamel and the surrounding areas. They're going to be up for the week of the festival and hopefully for the rest of the summer. So it's quotes from poems from our Poetry Day event in April. Yeah, so I think some of them are in response to the lockdown and stuff like that. So it's quite inspiring and it gives us something to read while we're queuing up outside pennies, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. You've designed those banners as well. Yeah, so on one side it's the quotes from the poems and then the other side is town. So I designed that logo. So you'll also see town. It's not the exact same, but it's a similar logo for Eyes on the Town. Oh, the on yeah, the so it's yeah, just it's slightly changed side. just for for the banners. Is that your design as well? Yeah. so yeah it's just a series of four drawings of local kind of landmarks or points of interest in Clamel so there's the main guard Old St Mary's the West Gate and Kick and Barracks oh yeah probably the most iconic things so I'm just thinking about like all the work that I have to get done we'll just take it as it comes basically there's a lot of kind of pre-work I guess the workload is nearly the same for me as other years there's still a lot of print even though it's digital there's a lot of stuff to go up around town so kind of taking care of that. If you were to say to anybody, um, don't miss this during the week. The Vision Revolution. It's Anne Cleary and Dennis Connolly at the School of Looking. Mm-hmm. So they're on for seven days. They're on for eight days, sorry. So one, the last day is the question and answers. But they have seven lectures on the electromagnetic spectrum, which will be really interesting. So they were here for the Junction Festival in 2018 mm-hmm. in the Arts Centre. And I was working for that and it was just so much fun to work for that exhibition Um, because they have like a really good mix of science and art and they make it really accessible and fun so I think it'd be interesting to see what they can do digitally do you know that sounds very deep the kind of the science of light and stuff yeah yeah like visible light and microwaves and radio waves and it sounds really like sciencey but like they make it very very accessible they make make things so accessible yeah actually I'm really looking yeah me too yeah yeah Clamel Rocks is another one that I'm looking forward to. I haven't really had anything to do with really bar just doing the logo and stuff, but from what I hear, it's a really fun project. So basically, it's two groups of young Clamel musicians who are after forming a band. So they came in, they recorded songs separately, they got tutorials from Stephen McGrath and Gev Barrett and Rebecca Keogh. I don't know how many songs they're after recording. They're after recording a video, they're after designing logos for t-shirts and stuff so they're like fully formed band now so you probably hear about them in the future and um, so yeah i guess yeah they're all really young just how involved they are in the arts and just 
brilliant, how much fun yeah. they're getting from it and especially when they're not necessarily interacting in the normal yeah in the normal yeah. sense yeah. um yeah. it's all kind of via zoom and stuff like that so yeah. a lot of adapting for everybody yeah totally yeah. another highlight would be the boatmen of clamel art trail so previous well pre-covid the idea for the festival that was going to be based around the river a lot mm-hmm. um so that would have been one of the big events but I guess one thing that we brought forward was artist response to the boatman of Clamel. So there is six art pieces throughout Clamel. You can pick up an art trail map at certain, like the museum and certain mm-hmm. shops and cafes throughout town. I guess one that I really like is Continuum by Michael Duran. And it's a newspaper with all different objects kind of related to Clamel and different photos. And you find them all in the museum, but it's just really, really nicely done. And I think anyone who picks it up will probably just hold on to it forever. Yeah. Do you know? There's lots of things people can actually get out and see, like the banners and then the be creative, all the kind of work. Yeah, yeah. In the windows of the shops and it could be quite a a colourful week. Yeah, even though a lot of it's online, there's still a good bit to see around Clamel. We also, in the mornings at nine o'clock, we have Move on the Blue Way. So that's kind of different videos, um, different exercises. Like I think there's running tips and yoga. So it's a good start for the morning. So I guess you can watch them and then actually go outside (laughs) on the Blue Way. (laughs) Or on the art trail. (laughs) Elizabeth, thanks a million. Thanks, Seymour. Well done on your hard work. And um, best of luck for the week ahead. Thanks a million. My name is James, so I am the studio manager here in the Clamel Junkin Arts Festival. And it's great because I get to meet a load of new faces, new people and talent. And I get to basically watch them come in and perform their talents, we'll say. Um, I'm really looking forward to this piece I'm doing later, actually. I'm going out in a boat to film something I've never done before. Excellent. So I'm really looking forward to it. Brilliant. Thanks a million, James. Hi, my name is Alan. I've been helping out with the recording and editing for all the footage for the Junction Festival this year. Since it's taken a new platform with everything going on, it's been really interesting to see the way things have been adapted for the festival. And it's been great to be a part of that process. I suppose a highlight for me is going to be performing in one of the Clamel Originals slots. I'm normally a musician, but that's been knocked in the head since the whole pandemic. We'd be unsure when we we're going to get back playing music. So it's a good opportunity to get the lads together again and, and play a bit of music. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. What's the name of your band? Uh, the Pearly Whites. Oh, the Pearly Whites. Mm, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> sure, that's fantastic. So that's going to be your highlight of the festival. I think so, yeah. Just getting getting together and being able to play a bit of music again. Like, because it's just since March we haven't done a thing. And it's just to be able to do it again. is yeah, looking right. forward to it now, yeah. So, yeah. um, and like I said, I don't know when we're going to get back to it. Like, so it's great to be able to do that too, as well as being involved in, in all the, the process of the recording and editing too, because it's something I did in college years ago and it's great to be able to put it into practice again. Yeah. Great mm-hmm. stuff, Alan. Thanks a million. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my name is Owen. I'm helping out with the audio recording and mixing. One of the highlights of the festival for me so far was the Donald Clancy recording. It was a great show. I really enjoyed doing it. It's a tribute to his father. It's on the 10th, 10th anniversary of his death. So it was re- it was a really wonderful concert to listen, yeah. to, listen to. Donald tells some great stories in between each song and everything. Well done on all the good work. I can just hear from all of you that there's absolutely so many people behind the scenes that nobody actually sees. Um, and you're the ones who are doing kind of the Trojan work. So well done on it all and best of luck for the festival. Thank you very much. My name is Colin Everett. I'm the production manager for the Clonmel Junction Arts Festival and have been for some years. And uh, we are now faced with a challenge of a new uh, festival on a digital platform of all these platforms that we need to be able to stream to. I was just saying to Elizabeth there, Colin, that um, I mean, it's always obvious, just as somebody who works in the arts, how much of the work goes on behind the scenes that people don't really see. But this year, more than ever, that yeah. becomes so important because it's all behind the scenes. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you think about it, it's like pre-production, you know. Well, for a festival, pre-production, a lot of shows come with their pre-production, their tech, everything's done, you know. If you think about theatre shows, outdoor events, you know, um, music uh, events, that everybody's done all their prep, you know. But this now, we're in a digital festival. We all have to do the pre-production works up. All video uh, pre-work, sound, you know, location. And obviously that's been a bit of a challenge in time as, you know, we couldn't travel and there was different areas we couldn't 
aspects of production were usually easier to do that we mm. couldn't really do. But yeah, it's been longer and, mm. uh, you know, as in pre-set up, because obviously mm. we're trying to real more or less set up a production company <laughs> more or less an av production company to do all the camera work and uh, also you know we're training the guys who would be live engineers or you know uh, people that work in visuals but now we're giving them a different platform to work from and trying to upskill and learn skills you know at the same time and uh, that they wouldn't have but yeah, it's been a it's it's a it's a long road. Uh, it's definitely a challenge we've taken on board, and and um, well, we'll uh, we'll get there. What would you say has been the most satisfying aspect of it? Any particular thing that stands out to you as? Yeah, you know, I think um, at the end, I think most of you know the production work we've done and the pieces that we've done. We're amazed at you know how much people have come together, and I think that was a nice point for me that so many people from all different you know backgrounds in the arts have come together and just given us some great ideas like you know some people wrote plays now they can't do them but they've took excerpts from the play and we've developed that and we've done like a little film piece and we've done you know uh, the Climate Rocks with the kids and we've done it very individually and everybody's done over Zoom you know so it's less contact so you're in a totally different working environment you know which is uh, but it's it's, the the most thing I like is it's so challenging and that you know everybody has actually come together and no one's really said no that's great. Yeah, it? that's great. Um, in terms of Festival Week, which kicks off on Saturday. Saturday, will it ease up a little bit? Or will the pace be as intense until it's all over? I think it'll, yeah, it'll be the same. Yeah. I think it'll be the same pace. And the reason is, you know, people say, you know, we could, you know, you just stream. But they're yeah. still live. And- there's still live events. We still have a lot of editing to do and, and topping and tailing of different mm-hmm. events. And what we're trying to do with the Festival Channel is trying to keep that going with other content. So we'll be still trying to stream content that we've done in the past. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for example, we've done other projects where people have all of a sudden the little gallery space is open. They said, oh, can we show our gallery space? And we've gone around and did a little shoot, video shoot and, you know, done little interviews. So we'll be still putting uh, editing together um, small pieces that we can air in between the scheduled program yeah. times. So, yeah, we'll be we'll be still busy, you know, so. Well, but it's good. You know what? A total Trojan effort on all your parts. Oh, thanks. And well done to all of you and best of luck for the festival. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for this episode of The Cup of Culture. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out www.junctionfestival.com and show your support to all those hardworking people. If you'd like to contact the podcast, the email address is southtipartspodcast at gmail.com and we'd love to hear from you. Talk to you all next time. <laughs>